Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Wednesday evening here in Australia, and the market is up $2.8 trillion, getting close to that $3 trillion mark now. I mean, it's just a sea of green. Things are quite frothy at the moment. Uh, again, I'll never offer you financial advice, but consider maybe, at least start to consider taking some profits if you're well in profit. Now, I think the market has a fair way to go. I think this is probably going to end up somewhere around sort of five to maybe seven trillion dollars overall now again never financial advice just my personal opinion so basically at uh, probably another 2x from here if not sort of even more so again it, it could come a whole lot earlier so that's why i'm just saying you know just if you're really in some profits take some no one ever lost money taking profits you're, you're highly unlikely to pick the absolute top you really are and you're probably not going to buy the absolute bottom either. No one does that. That's the that's the truth of it. No one does that. You just got to be thereabouts. So if you're in profit, consider taking some profit. Now I haven't taken any profit yet, but I definitely am considering taking some profits in the very near future. I could even do that tomorrow. I'm I'm not sure just yet, but what I know is based on my time, there's probably going to be a correction coming sometime soon. So taking at least a little bit of profits. Will mean a good time to buy back in now i still have my dollar cost averaging sort of money sitting on the side uh, and i am like i said i'm just waiting for dips now i'm not dollar cost averaging anymore i'm going to wait for big dips but i am going to also take profits uh, along the way from certain coins that have just performed really well now they'll probably continue to perform really well because they've been the best runners but in the end i just want to make sure that i've taken some profits i got caught out in 2017 I want to make sure I don't this time. But again, I'm not taking any profits just yet. But hey, tomorrow morning I might wake up and go, yep, now's the time. It won't be anything major. It'll be like, you know, maybe 5% if I'm lucky. But definitely considering it at the moment. All right, so again, BTC dominance dropping under 43% now. Uh, a bit of volume there to be expected, hence why the market is starting to pump. And gas prices, uh, it says $11 there, but you're still paying around about sort of 40 bucks for a smart contract uh, transaction. $11 is just simply sending some Ethereum or something from one place to another. That's the $11. Uh, and again, that is based on US. That's not even Australian prices. So even more for the Australians. But I got some interesting news for all my Australian viewers uh, and me being Australian, I found it extremely interesting. So let's have a look. We can see it's basically a sea of green, but look, even Shiba Inu is having a bit of a pullback. Again, it doesn't matter what coin it is. It can't go up forever. It gets to a point where it has to have a bit of a pullback. All right, so what's performed the best in the last 24 hours? Solana is looking quite nice there. All right, 24 hours. Oh, Loopring, nice. Arweave. Cadena, Maker, and there we go. Sol was up there. So I got myself a position uh, in Sol around about $171. Uh, it wasn't a very big position and it wasn't the best price, but doing all right uh, so far. Uh, pretty happy with that. Amp with a nice move. Crypto.com, I mean, you name it. Look, even Polygon back above $2. Still needs to get like $2.24 or something like that to get to its old all time high. Synthetics making a move, which is nice. Now, synthetics hasn't performed, you know, that well because of all the regulatory FUD that's going on. But I have had a number of airdrops by being part of synthetics, so I am glad that I've uh, stuck with them. And there's more coming. Again, even though there's lots of regulatory stuff going on, uh, I think synthetics will probably be all right, provided, you know, they, they will have to follow some rules. All cryptocurrencies will. That's just the plain and simple uh, thing of it. So for me, I'm keeping an eye on synthetics. Uh, I have some that I will sell, uh, but I have some that I just won't sell. And even if, you know, something drastic does happen to synthetics and it goes to zero, you know, so be it. Uh, I got synthetics at quite a cheap price. Uh, and if I was to lose it, it really wouldn't affect me that much. And again, I don't think that's what's going on, but I'm just saying that I, I, I still think synthetics has got a really big future. I think it will be okay regulatory wise, but again, it'll just, it'll have rules that it will have to follow like all cryptocurrencies. All right, so as we can see, see green, everything looks great. And you know, 30, nearly 40% moves. 
these kind of moves aren't going to last forever. That's why I'm saying just at least consider taking some profits. If something's, you know, if you're really, really up in something, take a little bit, 5%, 10%. You know, if it's up at 10x, you know, just take 10%, get your money back at the very least, and you can let the rest ride because you just never know when it's going to all turn around. And again, it could come tomorrow. There could be a really big correction tomorrow. And, you know, again, a lot of people will panic sell uh, at a loss uh, I won't be doing that. I'll simply be holding for better times. And again, I'll be buying the dips. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so we know what's done well. What hasn't done well in the last 24 hours in the top 100? There we go. Mana, again, of course it was going to have a pullback. Engine, chilies. So a lot of those NFT metaverse plays having a bit of a pullback now. It's not. They're not done for by any stretch of the imagination. There's going to be plenty more coming. Lots of stuff is still happening in that space. It's just they can't go up forever. It gets to a point where, you know, especially traders, if they're trading, you know, the breakout trades and things like that, they go, right, yeah, well, I'm taking some profits here. And other people just bought at a certain price. Maybe someone bought at 28 cents. And so when it got to $2.80, they went, God, I'm at a 10x here. All right, I'm going to take some profits uh, on engine. So things like that. So that's all you got to remember. Um, I highly doubt that the this is the top. I think the top will probably be, we're still a ways from it yet, but it's not just going to be up, up, up and all the way up. So look, two double digit losses and then we got some uh, high single digit losses. But again, considering the gains we had, these are pretty minimal losses. And again, these are all from coins that were pumping really hard not that long ago. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart and see where we're at. Bitcoin's still ranging. And that's why the alts are going crazy because Bitcoin is just in this ranging motion. Should Bitcoin break here and really start to pump, the alts will get dragged up with it, but they will lose a lot of a lot of liquidity. The liquidity will go into Bitcoin. That's just the way it goes. When Bitcoin runs, still drags everything up with it, but it just goes up by a whole lot more. But then when Bitcoin starts to stall out and takes a breather, this is where the the altcoins they just start to run and they really go sort of crazy. So keep that in mind. All right. Here's the story that really blew me away. I knew this kind of stuff was coming and I was just wondering when Australia was going to get on board. So Commonwealth Bank, you know, it's probably the biggest bank uh, in Australia. Uh, there's definitely four big ones. So Commonwealth, Westpac, uh, ANZ, which is Australia, New Zealand. And what is the other one? I can't even remember off the top of my head. Anyway, four big banks. I think Commonwealth would probably be uh, the biggest one. And they are filing in the crypto game. So they have actually teamed up with Gemini. So you will, if you're a Commonwealth Bank customer, uh, and I am, you'll soon be able to buy, sell, hold crypto through the bank's app. Now, I personally don't think having crypto with a bank is going to be that advantageous. You know, they're going to take their fees and all the rest of it. But for people who just don't understand crypto and are new, this will be absolutely great for them. But this won't last forever. The younger generation are going to work out that there's fees uh, in all of this stuff and the banks will really have to do something impressive to keep the younger generation. The older generation, the boomers and you know uh, people my age, Gen X and things like that, those who don't understand crypto, and I'm a Gen X but I understand it at least reasonably well, probably not going to use this kind of stuff but those who simply don't understand it uh, and are just getting excited by it this is going to be perfect for them for them but down here it says the bank will offer a crypto exchange and a custody service in collaboration with the gemini exchange so there you go uh, getting in with the Winkle winklevoss twins and the intelligence firm chainalysis so we go over here chainalysis they have actually opened up an office in australia and in canberra so uh, the capital of australia and it says here that they've partnered with the Commonwealth Bank on its plans to offer crypto trading to 6.5 million uh, app users. Now, Southern Asia and Oceania, which is where Australia falls into, are the fourth largest crypto market in the world, accounting for 572.5 billion, or 14% of all cryptocurrency transactions. So we go back to here. Now, Australia is the world's third largest adopter of cryptocurrency, according to uh, a survey. Uh, again, we'll have to it's got to take it on its word, but I know Australia really is getting into crypto quite heavily. Now, there's good and bad sides to that. Good that we're adopting it. Bad that, you know, a few people, if not a lot of people, are probably going to come in late and get, 
you know, a little bit torched and things like that. But hopefully they've done their research and understand that, you know, it is super volatile. But, you know, if you hold for four years, based on previous history, you're probably going to do all right. But again, we can't guarantee that that happens. But what's interesting is the offerings will start next week as a pilot. So I think they said there's 6.5 million people uh, that bank with the Commonwealth Bank. I don't know if all of them will be able to start using this. But hey, it's starting soon. So if you're with the Commonwealth Bank and you want to get into crypto, uh, go into your bank, give them a call, whatever, and find out uh, if you can be part of this pilot program. Unless you're, you know, a bit of a crypto sort of OG, uh, and then I would advise, you know, that you probably don't need the Commonwealth Bank. But you know, for all the new people to it, I definitely think this will just be the easiest way for them. But again, the younger millennials and things like that, I don't think they're going to uh, use it for too long when they find out. That they get charged to do it they probably don't get that good a price uh yeah and they can do it themselves uh and you know take in those extra gains and everyone wants extra gains all right the u.s government they've finally come out with their stable coin report so not regulation yet but they're moving towards that and at least the report now gives a clear indication of sort of where they're going to go so number one, it begins by describing some of the potential benefits of stablecoins. So this is good. They haven't just come out and just hammered it and said that's crap and all this. They said some of the uh, benefits are you know, faster, more efficient and more inclusive payment options. Now they did name the risks and that's what they're worried about and you know, I don't have any problems with that. And the risk to stablecoins uh, may pose to financial markets. These include uh, their use for trading for more speculative cryptocurrencies. I don't think that's really a risk. That is more, not the stable coins, it's a risk for people getting involved in uh, these cryptocurrencies, but that's got nothing to do with the stable coins. You know, they can still buy dodgy cryptocurrencies whether they're using stable coins or not. You know, there's fiat and on ramp fiat on and off ramps and then they just you know buy bitcoin or uh, ethereum if they're not using stable coins so i don't think that's really an issue for the stable coins but also the loss of confidence in their sufficient value and backing and that's specifically to do with tether but look tethers come a long way and they're really you know they're they're doing everything they can to get right which is good because a lot of people were worried about tether now they're being ordered and now they're you know abiding by all these rules so hopefully that tether stuff is just you know it'll be a thing of the past but the problem is there is so many different stable coins out there it's not like it's just tether and usdc there's a ton of other ones so there really is going to be some work that needs to be done and you know they're looking at that so to protect against some of these concerns, the report suggests legislation that requires their issuers to be insured by depository institutions, i.e. banks, central banks, things like that. It also advises that providers of custodial crypto wallets be subjected to federal oversight. Again, we all knew this was coming as long as the oversight isn't, you know, overbearing and it's just, you know, fair, then, you know, we have to accept that. There was always going to be regulation. We can't, you know, go mainstream and you know make all these crazy amounts of money without regulation that's just the plain truth it would just get crushed if it wouldn't get regulated now finally to address issues about concentration of power the paper calls for restrictions of stablecoin issuers connections with our commercial entity so again they really want governments and things like that to control it i.e central banks and things like that so we'll have to wait and see how the regulation comes out. Because again, there's so many different stable coins. You know, Terra's got their own. You know, True US and True AU and True Everything. You know, Synthetics has got their own, you know, uh, SUSD and you name it. There's a ton of different stable coins out there. So it's going to be interesting to see how they finally all fall under this regulatory uh regulatory powers and the reg just the regulation in general that we all know is coming so again this is just their report and it's good that they weren't just completely bashing it uh, but now we'll have to see what are the actual regulations that uh, follow from this now singapore has no plans to ban bitcoin singapore is a major financial hub in the again australasia uh, kind of area so again uh, southeast asia asia in general uh, and oceania now hong kong is the other one but then singapore uh, and again they have no plans to ban bitcoin i don't know if there's anyone that actually thinks bitcoin will be banned at the moment but if there is still people out there thinking it's going to be banned yeah 
anything's possible, but all the major players around the world are getting on board. And even the ones that were really anti-crypto, you know, like kind of India and places like that, uh, you know, yeah, they're all just falling in line because they can all see what's happening and they simply can't get left behind. This truly is a generational change. And people who get into crypto, you know, if you're in the right ones, I've said this before, and it can still be done now. Unfortunately, there's probably going to be a bear market, but we're nowhere near like mass saturation. If you get into the right ones and you simply hold, I really do believe some unbelievable life-changing wealth will come your way. But it just it's not going to happen overnight. The chances of you putting $8,000 into something like SHIB and then having $6 billion are extremely unlikely. Not impossible, but again, the the odds are probably better of winning the lotto in all fairness. But I mean, you know, whoever did that, $8,000 into $6 billion, good Lord. And apparently the money's moving around in that ship wallet uh, is what they're saying as well. So very interesting. All right, last but not least, the CMA, sorry, the CMA, the CME says it's launching Ethereum Micro Futures. So basically what that is, is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which is the CME, they're going to offer Ethereum micro futures on December 6th. And this is going to allow investors to make much smaller trades than with the current Ethereum future contracts. So again, it's micro investing, really easiest way to put it. And, you know, not everyone has $4,000 to buy some Ethereum. So, you know, you can now go in with a little bit less. I don't know exactly what the minimum amount's going to be, but it'll definitely be a lot cheaper than trying to buy uh, an entire Ethereum. I think it says here, it does. Ethereum contracts will be priced at one tenth of one ETH, so around four hundred and forty-nine dollars. Now that's still a bit much for you know certain people around the world. Sure, I mean even for me, you know, four hundred and fifty dollars. That's not exactly cheap. Hopefully, they'll be able to bring this down uh, even more. Uh, a tenth is good though, uh, and it's a start. And you know, I think Ethereum over. You know, again, the next 10 years, we're still, it's all dependent on ETH 2.0. Can it do what it says it's going to do? And, you know, within time that it doesn't simply get overrun by Solana or Cardano or whoever's coming. But if Ethereum, you know, stays the king of the hill, as they say, and ETH 2.0 rolls out uh, without any major hitches, I mean, who knows what Ethereum uh, will be in the future? You know, $450 for a tenth of it. Uh, and again, there's people saying Ethereum could get to, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars in the next 10 years. Well, how much uh, is 4,000 to get into 50, 60,000? It's a 10x. So, you know, you turn your 400 uh, into, you know, 4,000. That sounds pretty good to me. All right. That's it for me. Uh, a lot going on, particularly in Australia. And I'm really proud of that. I, I like that we've got on the front foot now we're really waiting for our own regulations to come out and we're going to see exactly where things are but look what's good for australia can still be good for the world because other countries can see what we've done and basically adopt similar kind of regulation that's generally what happens someone will regulate it first and if they think the regulation's good other countries follow suit they don't take it you know, word for word, but they basically do something very, very similar. And smaller nations will generally just jump on the back of uh, bigger nations and take it almost, you know, word for word, paragraph for paragraph. So exciting times. Things are definitely, uh, definitely kind of getting bubbly. So again, you know, just consider taking some profits. That's all I want to say. If you're really up, don't be afraid. It really, it's funny. I'm not sure what's harder, to buy the dip or to sell. Selling's really hard because you constantly think, no, nah, it's going to go another 10x from here. I'm just going to wait. And then unfortunately, a lot of the time, it doesn't go that other 10x or whatever it is. You're even thinking, no, nah, it'll double uh, in the next few days and it just doesn't. So that is a really hard thing to do. And again, same as like buying the dip when something's 50, 60, 70, 80% down, unless you've been in the space for a long time, you're probably going to be too scared and you'll be like, no, nah, that's going even lower. I'm going to wait and then it just starts its way up. So I'm not sure what's harder, but I know what's worse and what's worse is not taking profits. I can tell you that from experience. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Should all be on that game train at the moment and I'll see you next time.